free. Welcome into our award-winning locker room show sponsored by your Hampton Roads Chevy dealers. Now, the 2021 NFL Draft is in full swing, and today Hampton Roads sees its latest of many products to make it to the NFL. Former Notre Dame linebacker and Hampton native Jeremiah Wusu koromoa is selected in the second round by the Browns. Now, it was a surprise to many that the Bethel High product was not taken in the first round, but when Cleveland saw that he was still on the board, they made sure to trade up and selected him at number 52 overall. Now, with this pick, the Browns are getting the 2020 ACC Defensive Player of the Year and first team All-ACC selection. Today, Washington introduces its first round pick, linebacker Jamin Davis, a former Kentucky Wildcat who the team selected 19th overall. Davis has a lot in common with head coach Ron Rivera, who also played the linebacker position in the NFL. The two, like many of our viewers, have military ties. Rivera and Davis bonded over one another's military family background during the draft process. And today, as Davis is introduced by Washington as their latest defensive addition, he tells us how he feels about joining an organization whose coaches he's been able to bond with and what his first day in the building is like. Take a listen. It, it just definitely made me feel like I came to the right organization. I came to the right coaching staff and knowing that I'm going to get a chance to learn from guys that's been in this situation before and just knowing that I'm going to learn from some of the best. It's honestly been a little overwhelming getting a chance to actually just walk around this place and just be pretty cool to meet Coach Riviera and everybody. And now I'm just, like I said before, <laughs> ready to get to work. Ready to get to work. Love to hear it. Now Washington has also invested in the offensive side of the ball. They've selected Samuel Cosney in the second round, an offensive tackle out of Texas. He's a big dude, six foot seven and 310 pounds, and he has a lot of experience as a three-year starter for the Longhorns. It's also really valuable that he has played a wealth of games at both the right tackle and left tackle positions, showing that he can play on both sides of the offensive line. Now we're going to take a quick break, but there is more football on the way as we catch up with our local teams playing for state titles. That is ahead in the locker room. At our award-winning locker room show sponsored by your Hampton Roads Chevy dealers. Now we have three local high school football teams that are about to play their biggest games of the season because tomorrow afternoon, Oscar Smith, Lake Taylor, and Lafayette host state championship games. The Lake Taylor Titans are the only defending champs out of the trio and a win tomorrow will mark the first time they become back-to-back -back champions. They're gonna face Salem with the champs for redemption because the last time that these two played, Salem beat them in the postseason in 2015. And when the Titans take the field at 3 p.m. tomorrow, they tell me they're going to be going by the motto that they do every championship game. For states, 48 minutes to win in a lifetime to think about it. That means no excuses. Mm -hmm. No excuses. Leave it all out on the field. Do your best because you got a lifetime to think about what you've done, win or lose. Now the Oscar Smith Tigers also made it to last season's title game, but fell short against South County, who they're going to be facing again in this year's championship. So like the Titans, the Tigers want some revenge when they host South County at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Coming up short, you know, uh, is, is something that you'll remember for your entire life. And then the fact that you get a chance to go back at it and get a chance to uh, right your wrong, so to speak, the next year um, is something that those guys have made a focus on. And last but not least, we have Lafayette preparing to host Lord Botetot in the Class 3 title game. The Rams will be facing a stacked squad at 2 p.m. tomorrow because their opponent is sending 11 players on to play at the FBS or FCS college football level. So Lafayette, they know that they're the underdogs heading into this one. But I know we're the underdogs this week. You know, this is, this is you know, this is probably the biggest high school football team you'll see coming in here. I mean, they're massive across the front. They got guys with full scholarships going everywhere. We got one, you know, so hey, yeah, you know, it's David and Goliath, I think, you know. David and Goliath. It'll be great to watch those three play tomorrow. Now we're going to take another quick break, but stick around because you are going to want to see how ODU baseball kicks off its biggest series of the season. It's a battle of top 25 teams next in the locker room. At our award-winning locker room show sponsored by your Hampton Roads Chevy dealers. Now this weekend marks the biggest series of the season for Old Dominion Baseball, which hosts Charlotte. It is a showdown between a pair of top 25 teams and important for the Monarchs to get the weekend started with a win after going one in three in last weekend's series at Charlotte. Now the Monarchs, they obviously know how big of a weekend this is and 
Turns out their fans do as well. Lots of them showed up at the Bud today to watch body paint and all. Our boys are ranked this year. We're just coming out here, got to show our support. You know, uh, Charlotte whooped us in the last series, so we had to come back here, you know, and uh, the boys are playing great today. Show Freaking awesome. Better, yeah. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, do you? They gave it super fans plenty to cheer about, too, starting with the very first Monarch at bat of the game. Bottom of the first, Kyle Battle. He homers off of Bryce McGowan to left center, and the Monarchs, they jump to a 1 0 lead. Now with the wind blowing to the outfield, it certainly made a good environment for homers today and Battle has his second of the game in the sixth inning, this time opposite field, giving the Monarchs a 6-3 lead. Now ODU, they never trail in this one, winning 8-3. A great start to this weekend after falling in three of four games at Charlotte in last weekend's series. We, we got tons of respect for, for those guys, and they kicked our butts last Sunday twice. And so, you know, we got back to work this week. I thought we played a little bit, you know, more like we've been playing all year today. It's always important to win the first game. That's huge momentum going into the weekend. Uh, puts a lot of pressure on them, and uh, we're just ready to go. Now the two will be taking the field again tomorrow at 2 p.m. for the first game of a doubleheader before closing out the series on Sunday. That's going to do it for this edition of our award-winning locker room show. From me and everyone behind the scenes who helped make this thing happen, thanks for tuning in. Now before we say goodbye, here is the final check of the forecast with Patrick Rocky.